हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आवर एजुकेशनल चैनल टुडे सब्जेक्ट इज एन आर आई टैक्सेशन ऑन सेल ऑफ एंसेस्ट्रल प्रॉपर्टी इन इंडिया आई रिपीट द सब्जेक्ट एन आर आई टैक्सेशन ऑन सेल ऑफ एंसेस्ट्रल प्रॉपर्टी इन इंडिया this is a very important subject but before that i would like to give my brief introduction my name is tinir varun chatterjee i am the mentor and senior partner of tcn global and economic advisory services i have experience of more than 40 years in reputed multinational in the areas of taxation finance audit insurance foreign trade hema and corporate law matters i have selected this subject considering the fact that there are many nris who are staying abroad for a long long time but they have lot of ancestral property in india they are not very sure if they want to sell it whether it will attract any taxations if so what is the taxation how the tax will be paid who will pay the tax what are the various compliances necessary to effect the execution of the conveyance deed rate of taxation etc etc so today's discussions will be to explain you how the taxation will impact on sale of ancestral property here property means immovable property basically land and building now there are three important principles of taxation i am talking about income tax these are very very important not only for this particular subject but for all tax matters under indian income tax act 1961 number 1 whether you are resident or non resident not ordinarily resident tax is always to be paid on income accrued in india this is the most important thing so if you are a resident you have to pay tax not only on india but also income earned in other countries too so if you are a resident you have to pay tax on your global income in india if you are a non resident the rule is you have to pay tax only on income accrued in india so therefore if a non resident has any capital gain income out of selling ancestral property he has to pay tax no matter whether he is resident or non resident these are very important principles in indian income tax act so now we have come to know if an nri has ancestral property in india and if they want to dispose it 
they have to pay Indian income tax as applicable under the Indian Income Tax Act 1961. The most important question is that how to calculate the income? Say for example, your grandfather has purchased a property in the year 1961 for a total value of rupees 1 lakh. We will show the computations during our deliberations. So, cost of acquisition in 1961 was rupees 1 lakh. That time you were not born also. Now through legal heresy, your father had got the property. And again through legal heresy, you are not own, you are now owning the property. The question is that, how I will calculate the capital gain? I am ready to pay tax. So, there is a specific system which we are going to explain you. Since the property was purchased in 1961 and the property has been sold by you in the year say 21, 22. So, you have to calculate the capital gain tax for the financial year 21, 22. So, it was purchased at rupees 1 lakh and in 21, 22, you sold this property for 2 crores. Now, the question number 1 whether you have to pay tax on 1 crore 99 lakhs, that is 2 crores minus 1 lakh. If not, what would be the acquisition value in respect of the property which you have sold in the year 21-22? Now, the tax law says that if the property was purchased before 1 4 2001, I repeat 1 4 2001, you have to make the fair market value of that property on 1 4 2001. So, your grandfather had purchased the property for rupees 1 lakh. We have to first make the fair market value of that property on 1 4 2001, that is after a gap of 40 years. Who will make this fair value? This valuation will be done by the registered valuer. They will calculate based on their valuation methodology which will take care about the inflations and other parts and they will give a specific report stating that this is the value. So, assume that the valuer has made a total valuation of 50 lakhs. So, one core property purchased on 1 4 say 61 valued at 50 lakhs rupees on 1 4 2001 by the value. So, would you like to pay the tax on 2 lakh minus 50 lakhs 1 lakh 50,000? No. You are selling the property in the year 21-22. So, that 50 lakhs value on 1 for 2001 has to be indexed at 
and to be recalculated as on 1 4 2021. So, how will you index it? Then you have to see the indexation. On 1 4 2001, indexation was 100 and value was 50 lakhs. In 2122, the index has increased to 317. The property was purchased in 1961 at 1 lakh rupees. That value has been updated based on fair market value as on 1 4 2001 by the registered valuer amounting to rupees 50 lakhs. But that is on 1 4 2001 and you have sold the property during 21 22. So I have to further index this value applying indexation. What was the index in 2001 and 2? 100. And what is the index during 21-22 that is announced by the CBDT? 370. Therefore, 100 index is equal to 50 lakhs. So, 317 index will be equivalent to 1 crore 58 lakh 50,000. So, therefore, your index cost will be considered as 1 crore 58 lakhs 50,000. You have sold at which value? You have sold at a value of rupees 2 crore. So, what is the difference? The difference is 41 lakh 50 thousand and that will be considered as long term capital gain. Would the same law will apply to a resident individual? Answer is yes. Resident individual has also to pay tax based on the same computation method. That means the total capital gain income will be 41,50,000. What is the tax rate for non-resident? 20% plus surcharge. So, the tax will be 8,30,000. So, very clear property was purchased on 1461. 1 lakh. The same property has been revalued by the valuer on 1 4 2001, 50 lakhs. The same property has been indexed by applying the indexation as declared by the Central Board of Direct Taxes indexation in 21 22 was 317. So, by applying 317 indexation, I am getting the index cost as 1 crore 58 lakh 50,000. So, therefore, the surplus is 2 crore minus 1 crore 58 lakh 50,000 is equal to. 41 lakh 50,000. What is the tax rate? 20 percent. What is the tax amount? 8 lakh 30,000 because 20 percent on 41 lakh 50,000 comes to 8 lakh 30,000 plus surcharge. Now, who will pay this tax? Is the seller or the buyer? Under Income Tax Act, 
particularly for this section, relevant section is 195. The buyer has to deduct this tax from the sale proceeds. And buyer has to pay tax. The seller has nothing to do. What seller has to say? He will disclose all these informations which are not available with the buyers. These are all available with the sellers only. He knows at what price his grandfather had purchased the property. He knows what is the valuation of that property as on 1 4 2001. And then by applying indexation, he knows what is the index cost. All these informations are to be given to the buyer to satisfy that this is the amount of taxations and that amount has to be deducted as we have calculated 8,30,000 rupees plus third charge that has to be deducted from the sale proceeds and that amount has to be deposited to the credit of the revenue. So friends, after making this payment and taking a certificate certifying that he has paid the due tax, he can certainly go to his banker with a request for remitting the money in foreign currency to his dwelling place outside India. He has to satisfy to the bank that is authorized dealer that he has paid the due tax on income accrued in India which is a very very important and for that particular purpose the return submitted by the buyer in respect of deduction of tax under section 195 will be very very important otherwise the bank may not remit that money. Of course, he has to comply the foreign exchange management act in respect of remittance of fund from India to abroad. These are the basic, uh, uh, basic points with regard to the sale of immobile property in India by the NRIs. They are free, they can always sell the property if there is an NRI and in that case they have to pay the due tax accrued in India and thereafter the remaining amount they can remit to their home country by way of bank transfer and complying the income tax and foreign exchange management act. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. If you like my deliberations and feel that is helpful to all the NRIs, there are several NRIs and you may be knowing or not, India gets around 89 billion dollar per year by way of remittance, NRI remittance coming to India. So NRI are very, very respected to all of us. So I hope these presentations or these deliberations will be able to clear a lot of doubts in the minds of the non-resident Indians and they can freely sell their property in India and take the money out after complying all the rules and regulations as applicable under the Income Tax Act and Foreign Exchange Management Act. If you like this presentation, please like it, please share it and of course you must subscribe it. 
why you will subscribe from this particular channel you will not only get taxation you will get latest ready made informations on corporate law on foreign trade on fema on insurance management taxations and corporate laws and we will be updating you from time to time by way of uploading our latest videos on the subject thank you very much